So Nisha, you're white, you're my age. Did you like Eminem when you were a kid? Oh, I used to love Eminem. No, yeah, that's the correct answer. <laughs> the, every, every white teenager in the 90s fucking loved Eminem. Let's go. Despite being almost 50 fucking years old at the time of recording this video, Eminem continues to dominate in an industry usually reserved for younger artists and shows no signs of slowing down. Something that likely has a lot to do with the fact that Eminem reportedly loves words and figuring out how to rhyme them. So much so, one of his favourite books is reportedly The Dictionary. So to start with, Eminem's quite a private person, isn't he? Yes, uh, notoriously private, doesn't like really giving interviews, um, he's quite shy. Um, which is somewhat ironic given his profession of standing on stage and screaming out facts about himself. But for the most part, yeah, he likes to keep himself to himself. And he's a notorious perfectionist and workaholic to the point where he has a reputation in the industry as one of the hardest people to please. Uh, to such an extent, people wanting to collaborate with him uh, will be warned by other people who have done that in the past. Um, be prepared. Curse Eminem is going to test you. What do you mean he's going to test them? Uh, well, Eminem really, really doesn't like uh, the idea of using a ghostwriter. He's especially critical of rappers who use ghostwriters because the whole point of being a rapper is writing your own raps. So something that he does when he collaborates with people is he'll sit them down with um, a pad and pencil and say, write a rap. Or he'll take them into a recording booth without their entourage, without their friends, and say, record something. And if you can't rap, or you can't hold your own, you're not collaborating with Eminem. Because Eminem does not want to work or collaborate with someone who doesn't write their own music. There's a famous story recounted by Ed Sheeran. And the story goes that Ed Sheeran warned Kendrick Lamar about that. Because Eminem had heard through his rap friends that Kendrick Lamar was one of the, the best um, writers, rappers in the industry at the time. And I was like, well, I want to work with him. And Kendrick Lamar rocks up with his huge, big Kendrick Lamar entourage into Eminem's studio, at which point Eminem's like, you, here, now, <laughs> sit, write, rap, now, do it. And Kendrick Lamar writes and raps, and Eminem's like, yeah, he's pretty good. All right, we can work together, let's, let's drop some beats. And that'd be really scary, because Eminem is a really scary looking guy, despite the fact he's apparently quite nice. He's apparently well, he's got a really good sense of humour, and he doesn't mind laughing at himself, evidently given by like, the things he raps about. Which is why he's often quite happy to cameo as himself and have jokes made at his expense. Like his cameo in the interview, uh, where he's talking to James Franco, and he drops the line, I'm, I'm probably gonna get this wrong where, yeah, I've been dropping breadcrumbs of gayness in all of my lyrics. I pretty much just been leaving a breadcrumb trail of gayness. I see that now, you know. Where James Franco's asking him about his homophobic lyrics, which is um, an actual argument Eminem has had a lot with critics uh, over like the content and some of the, his raps, um, to which none other than Elton John, you know, like big gay godfather of the world, um, Elton John has come out and said, Eminem is not homophobic in the slightest. He's one of my closest best friends. Because the fun fact about Eminem, for people who may not know, is that he's best friends with Elton John because Elton John helped him overcome his addiction to prescription painkillers because Elton John himself had struggled with uh, you know, addiction to drugs in, in the 1980s when he was a big dick rock star. Yeah. But that's one of the reasons why Elton John appeared on stage, uh, I think it was the MTV Music Awards one year, and sung Stan with Eminem. Oh, nice. Elton John has in interviews said, yeah, there's not a, a homophobic bone in Eminem's body. In fact, um, he couldn't make it to my wedding because he was too busy recording an album, but he did send me and my partner a lovely gift of two diamond encrusted cock rings, which is a real thing he did. And according to Elton John, they've never been used, but they sit with pride of place on his mantelpiece. <laughs> I got this package from Eminem and shows you how homophobic he isn't. We had two diamond encrusted cock rings. <laughs> <laughs> Velvet cushions. <laughs> All right, so we've established that Eminem is not a big fan of ghostwriters. No, and that even seems to extend to social media, or at least that's the conclusion I've drawn um, from this now legendary tweet sent out by Eminem, uh, which simply reads, everyone thinks I don't write my own tweets, but I wrote this one. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's up there with like, the most legendary of legend rap tweets ever sent. Because I, <laughs> nothing will ever top the 50 cent one, which is, my grandma just told me to take out the trash, I'm rich, I don't need this shit. Oh yeah. 
that's, <laughs> that's like that's the absolute best one that will never be top. But that Eminem one's close. And then there's the Kanye West one where it's I hate when you're on a plane and you're asleep and you wake up and there's a water bottle next to you and you're like, I guess I've got to look after this water bottle now. What? Just because it's so stupid and so on point, and it's Kanye West of all people making that observation. Um, but before we move on from legendary tweets, we have to give big props to Jaden Smith himself of just how can mirrors be real if our eyes are real? <laughs> what? Have you not seen Jaden Smith tweets? No, I've not seen that. Look it up right now. The faraway Nisha, just Google right now on your computer Jaden Smith tweets. Yep and read a few of them out live, because these are fucking brilliant if you're not familiar with them. The more time you spend awake, the more time you spend asleep. Uh, the, so the, some of them are fucking just on point, and I love that one. Do I, Anisha, do you have like a favourite tweet of all time before I move on? Maybe when Ed Balls just like tweeted his name, and it's now like a national holiday. Balls. Yeah, Ed Balls. Ed Balls. <laughs> Ed, uh, Ed Balls, Ed Balls, Ed Balls. It's fucking brilliant. Anyway, moving on, Eminem is not all that familiar with uh, modern technology as we've discussed in part in an older video about the fact that Eminem didn't know you could find porn on the internet. Go look up that one if you're interested in finding out more about that story. And as you might imagine, given his unfamiliarity with technology, Eminem prefers to write most of his raps using pen and paper. And he has a very specific, and some would say, obtuse and unique way of composing raps, rhymes, and songs. So yeah, we've, we've talked about how he's a private person, so have we mm -hmm. like had any insight to how he creates these rhymes? Uh, yes we do, because Eminem, while admittedly a private person, has revealed some elements of his writing process in the past. And there's an idea of how seriously Eminem takes writing his raps and his rhymes, and how laborious a process it is for him. It can reportedly take him upwards of several weeks to write a single line. If that sounds like a ridiculous amount of time, so why would it take him that long? It takes that long because Eminem agonizes over every individual syllable of every sentence in an attempt to create as many rhymes within his lyrics as possible. And there's an interview with the Rolling Stone where he delves a little deeper into this process and he notes that when he's creating a line for one of his songs, he will break down every individual element of a sentence and cross-analyze it with every word that he knows in order to create as many rhymes as possible within that line and the following line and then the line that precedes it. And he'll do, use this process over and over and over and over again so he can create as many individual rhymes as he can. And one of the things that he likes to do is bend the pronunciation of certain words so that they will fit. And the most famous example of that um, is one of Eminem's biggest pet peeves, which is the sentence, there's nothing that rhymes with orange. And there's an interview with Anderson Cooper, I believe, where Eminem addresses it. He goes, Everyone always says there's no word that rhymes with orange, and that's just stupid. Uh, and then he proceeds to say a brief rap that he makes up off the top of his head, where he rhymes 11 words in a row with orange, that I can't do justice, so here's just a clip of him doing it. I put my orange, four inch, door hinge in storage, and ate porridge with George. <laughs> so yeah, just hearing about this is, really bizarre that he has this process of writing songs. Yeah, but it's one of the reasons that his like lyrical ability is so widely praised in the industry and probably one of the reasons he's still successful to this day because he takes it so seriously and he's so painstaking and so laborious in his process for creating raps and rhymes and it extends to a childhood habit of his which was reading the dictionary from cover to cover to find weird and strange words which he would then break down into their individual components to try and create nonsense raps and rhymes for them. And while this didn't really result in lyrics that made any sense, it did result in ones where there were upwards of a dozen rhymes in the space of 10 words. Because one of the things Eminem absolutely loves doing is cramming as many rhymes as possible into a single sentence. And then if you imagine that he's going through all of his raps and trying to make every syllable in every word rhyme with a syllable in the following sentence, and he's doing that for every single sentence going all the way through, you can see why it takes him so long to write a song and why his songs and his lyrical ability tends to be praised so much. And this is all combined to give Eminem arguably one of the most expansive vocabularies of any musician working today. Because there have been analysis has done of like various rappers, various musicians, of like, okay, so how many different, unique, strange, archaic words are they using in their songs? And whenever one of these studies is done, Eminem will nearly always come up at the top because of this habit of his of just 
loving, uh, rhyming, obscure, weird words with one another and stretching the pronunciation and definitions of what words can mean and figuring out alternate interpretations of what things mean and sl slotting them all together to create what essentially amounts to rap puzzles that then need to be solved. And I love that shit. I love the idea that he thinks about it more than not at all. Yeah, just thinking about like how much effort Eminem goes to to create all these different rhymes, but mm -hmm. then you get other artists who rhyme the word Kodak with the word Kodak. Yeah, was that Pitbull who did yep. that? <laughs> yep. Which is fucking awful. And that Kodak thing reminds me a little bit of um, some criticism that was levied against Lil Wayne for a seemingly, on the surface, very bad line in one of his songs, which was, if I remember it correctly, real G's move silently like lasagna which was widely criticised, like, oh, this is a stupid fucking line, it makes no sense. Lasagna has a G that's silent, so it makes perfect sense. It's the people criticising, they're the stupid one. It's a, it's a funny line, and I love that shit, because it's so clever. But at the same time, it's dumb. Uh, it reminds me of, um, I think it's Travis Barker. Okay. I know it is like the end song on like 22 Jump Street. Okay. There's a lyric in the song on that that says, we're still running shit, call it diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's dumb and it's stupid, but it makes sense. I love that stuff, it's so good. Sanisha, you like music, yes? That's correct. And this video has broadly been a discussion of music and lyrics. So are there any lyrics that you particularly like or dislike in songs you'd like to single out now uh, for the, the ending discussion? One of my major pet peeves is when artists use like the same word to rhyme with the same word. <sighs> Not only is it super fucking lazy, it's not even necessary because as Eminem has proven, you can bend the pronunciation of words to make them fit because that's what creative music is. It's about being creative with language. Anyway, I'm guessing you have an example for me right now. Is it more egregious than Kodak with Kodak? I'll tell you which one it is. You might remember the song. Okay. And see what you think. But can you remember Walk the Moon, Shut Up and Dance? I know the song, but I'm not familiar with the line you're talking about. Also, I'm just stretching because... Oh, that's better. So in the chorus, mm -hmm. the lines are, right, it says, Oh, don't you dare look back, just keep your eyes on me. I said you're holding back, she said shut up and dance with me. Oh, God. Oh, that's the worst. So it's like, it's the ABAB -A -B rhyming structure, but they couldn't even think of words to rhyme with back and me. Two of perhaps the easiest fucking words to rhyme with, because there's like a <laughs> hundred different words that rhyme with either of Oh, so fucking bad. That's worse than Kodak with Kodak. It's such a catchy song, but that, it just bugs me. A, a pet peeve I have is just like really bad lyrics. And uh, we've, I've discussed it on the podcast with Lucas before. There's a concept in the musical industry known as write a word, get a third. And for people wondering, what the fuck's that? Um, it is a, a, a lesser discussed aspect of the music industry. And it is, say, let, let's say you've got a pop star and you want to like, you know, give them a bit of like, you know, creative clout. Um, though they write their own songs, but they're not really that talented. What you do is you get a song written by somebody else, uh, a songwriter who actually knows what they're doing, and then what you do is you present that to the artist and you ask them to make a single suggestion for a change. And it can be as simple as a single word. And once they make that one suggestion, you change the song, send it back to the original songwriter to make sure it fits and it works, for like, um, and it rhymes and all that bollocks. And now, because that shitty pop star has made a single change to that song, they get a third of the writing credit. Hence, write a word, get a third. And that is apparently a hugely popular thing in the industry when you want to establish an artist as being like, you know, legitimate. And that's why when you look at pop songs, you'll usually see two or three additional writers in addition to um, the artist that sings it. And in a lot of those cases, the artist singing the song probably did that. And that's why if you go look at the credits for a lot of big pop songs, you'll see that if the song is supposedly written by the artist singing it, you'll see in addition to that, two or three extra writers you've never heard of. And I fucking hate that. And I think the famous example of that is um, uh, you go look at the song Girls by Beyonce, uh, which is just repeating the phrase, who runs the world, girls, who runs the world, girls, who runs the world, girls. Uh, can you just double check this for me, Nisha? Just type that into Wikipedia for me now. Credits you got the song? and personnel, yeah. Yeah, okay. Count how many writers there are on that song. Six, that includes Beyonce. So, so it's got six writers, including Beyonce. And do you want to just Google the lyrics dead quick? And just give us a selection of the lyrics that took six writers to create. Girls, we run this mother. Yeah. Spell M-O-T-H-A. <laughs> okay. So there's four lines that say, girls, we run this mother. Yeah. 
Girls, we run this mother, yeah. Girls, we run this mother, yeah. Six writers. Okay, and now, <laughs> if you would, Nisha, um, for my own amusement, for the honest at home, Google Bohemian Rhapsody and see how many people wrote that one. Written by Freddie Mercury. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> That's it. One writer. One. Freddie fucking Mercury. Did it all on his own. No help. 